Hi guys, uh, my name's Andy and I'm a weekend away with my wife at my son's and his wife's down in Pimlico, London and I've delved into his uh, drinks cabinet and like I told you the other week, what have I found? Pirate cask, 1623, absolutely gem of a rum. So I, now this rum here, uh, Pirate cask, 1623, originally produced in Anguilla Anguilla is a British overseas territory in the Caribbean and is one of the most northerly of the Leeward Islands in the Lesser Antilles. Uh, it's lying east of Puerto Rico and the British Virgin Islands directly north of St. Martin. So dispense now with the location, we get straight down to a little bit of information about the rum. Uh, Pirate Cash uh, produced, like I said, originally it was produced in Anguilla. Uh, recent changes have seen it now produced at the Diamond Distillery in Guyana. Now, mention the Diamond Distillery to me and you know what I'm like with uh, Guyana rums and Demerara rums. I just love them. Now, when you taste this rum, most Guyana rums, when you taste it, even when you finish the drink, you can go to that glass half an hour later and still smell the rich molasses and the, the smell of the rum. And that's pr predominantly with Guyana rums. You can always, it's a very strong tasting rum. Now, like I said, uh, the recent changes have seen it moved to the Diamond Distillery. And at the Diamond Distillery, they have a high ester still. And this high ester still, uh, when they draw off the distiller, uh, it, it can, leave really, when they actually uh, distill the rum and age it, it, it can produce such really great flavour profiles and subtle nuances that other stills don't produce. So, you know, there, with the pirate rums, there are there is an underlying orange flavour that seems to go through all their range. Now, it's very subtle and people tend to, some people are on the fence about it. They seem to say, oh, it's through flavorings. Oh, and some people say, you know, it's through this high ester still and, and the aging process. Well, you know, this, this rum, it really does have this underlying orange flavor, which is really nice and different. It puts it in another level of rum, it takes it to another different taste sensation. Now, this is the Pirates flagship rum. You know, you have the, I've done the EXO review, fantastic rum. This is the flagship rum of Pirate. And at the price they're charging for it, it bloody should be as well. Because it, they charge some bucks for this rum. Now, it's a blend of Caribbean rums, right? Uh, predominantly Guyanan rums with a small percentage of other Caribbean rums in the blend. And it's a blend of rums of up to 40 years in age. 40 years in age. My God, that's only 11, that's 11 more years, they'd be up to my age. But like I said, that's one hell of an age of a rum. Now each bottle is hand blown glass. And I'm gonna show you another bottle. Comes in a gorgeous wooden walnut uh, box with a magnetic front to it, as you can see. Um, Take the bottle out and we'll show you. Right. Beautiful hand blown decanter. Really thick. Sort of chubby bottle you'd expect it to be in a pirate ship. Nice and short and fat. So when the waves are moving around, it stays nice and still on the deck. You know what I mean? Now, on the front of it, you have a, ha a, a brass amulet of Hoti, the patron saint of bartenders. And, you know, Lovely little touch. I like that. You know, you're paying the money, you spare little touches to it, don't you? And, you know, some people are superficial. You might say it's superficial, but I'm a firm believer that, you know, if you're paying for a premium rum, you want it in a nice bottle, you want a cork stopper, you want all the, uh, you want all the knobs on top, don't you? Now, if you look on the side, you have a hat, you have a hand signed and serial number to make it exclusive. So you know that you are getting a very sort of limited production. And then if you turn around and look at the colour itself, it's a deep, rich, mahogany colour. 
and it, you, you can tell it's going to be a rich, flavorful rum. Now, I'm going to pour a little glass now. There we go, like I said, it's a nice cork stopper. You can smell that stopper, it's, oh, it's gorgeous. It fits nice and tight, which we want it to do. We don't want no uh, evaporation from this one. Now, I'm going to pour a little glass. There we go, not too much because, just like I said, it's my son's rum and I don't want to take advantage of him, but you know, I have had one earlier to just get a little bit of taste to it. So, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful mahogany colour. The smell, as with all pirate rums, let me put this back up on here so you can see. The smell, was, as with all pirate range, as soon as you take the cork off the bottle, you have a gorgeous orange aroma that just fills the whole room, the area. It just really is beautiful orange flavour. Smell to it. Smell, like I said, first of all, you get that lovely orange smell. There's a sort of a butterscotchy caramel smell into it. Underlying smell of molasses, which is, that, you know, like I say, predominantly a Guyana rum, so you're going to get that smell underneath. It's a really refined, beautiful, complex smell to it. And then we have a little taste. My God, that's so smooth, so sweet. It goes from a beautiful, you can taste a bit of vanilla in there. Uh, it's baked fruit, really does have like a lovely baked fruit to it. Um, it's lovely warm spiciness, but it's so sweet with an underlying um, orange zesty sort of taste to it. It's beautiful, it really is a gorgeous rum. Um, just have another little taste on this one for the finish. My God, it's so smooth. It goes to a lovely, zingy, peppery, orangey finish. It's, it's just, and it just fades out. The orange just fades out. It's beautiful. It really is uh, excellent rum and one of the smoothest rums I've tasted. Now, Price-wise, my God, it better be smooth as well. £225 to buy that bottle. Crazy, man. Big money, big bucks. 40-year-old in the blend, so you've got to take it into account. These rums have been aged for 40 years. That's, some people don't even get the chance to live to 40 years old. So £225 in the big scheme of things, is it too much? Some people would say no. Other people would say, my God, yes, yeah, well over the top. Um, I'll leave that one for you guys to decide. Um, it is an exceptional rum. I personally don't know if I would pay £225 for it, but it is beautiful and way up there. So if you get the chance to try it, I would say, have a go at it. Once in a life, let's say once in a lifetime rum. Buy one try it, you've done it. If, you know, if you're that way inclined, you can afford more, do it, but that's what I would say. My name is Andy, and until next time, enjoy.